righteous God we praise your holy name we ask Lord God that you would do your will in this place help us Lord God be in tune with you we worship you let's clap our hands let's shout out to God let's praise him let's praise him Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we magnify you God we praise your name Jesus let's worship together Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him the praise right now. Say, God, you are worthy. Say, God, we enter into this place with praise. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you, singing hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Yeah. 
you are good all the time all the time lord you are good and you are good all the time see all the time lord you are good because you are good all the time all the time lord you are good you are good all the time all the time lord you are good people from every nation and tongue from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you to push a little bit. Come on, push a little bit in the spirit. Push until you feel a breakthrough. Come on, we're going to push. Say, we're going to push. Hallelujah. Yeah. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. We worship you hallelujah ha come on we're breaking the atmosphere worship you for who you are because you are good all the time see all the time lord you are good see you are good all the time see all the time lord you are good because you are good all the time all the time, Lord, you are good. You are good all the time. All the time, Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Oh, I magnify the name. I magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Say, there is breakthrough happening. <laughs> I tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve. And listen to this. You take the broken things and he raised them. And he raised them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say I am. You crowned me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. This is my victory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Come on, I want everybody to raise their hands. Yes, hallelujah. 
say, God, I give it all to you. Say, God, I surrender everything. Hallelujah. Say, God, I give you my thoughts, Lord. Say, I give you my actions. Say, God, I surrender everything right now. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me when I lift my voice and shout every wall comes crashing down I have Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking now. I have the authority. Come on, declare it right now. Jesus has given me. Come on, church. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my oh, thank you, mouth, Jesus. miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me you made a way. Yes. When our packs were against the wall. And it looked as if it was over. You made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Has God ever did that for you? When you feel like your backs were all the way against the wall. God, you're like, God, I don't understand what's going on. Say, God, it doesn't look like you're there for me. It doesn't look like you care. But our God is a great God. Oh, oh yes. you move mountains. You cause worlds to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made. You move mountains. Yes. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made. One more time. You move mountains. You call walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that my God cannot do. That's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Oh, thank you for your cleansing blood. Oh, there, it washes everything away. Oh, you move mountains. 
you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Before we continue, I wonder if we can just lift our hands. Whatever you brought today, why don't you just talk to Jesus about it. We all have needs. We all have circumstances. But we have a God that loves us and that is close and that is in this place right now. His spirit is here to minister. His spirit is here to touch your situation, to give you direction, to give you clarity, to give you peace, to give you hope and healing. Lord, let's just talk to him. Lord, I praise you. I'm so thankful, God, that you've entered this place. I'm so thankful, God, for your righteousness. God, your faithfulness towards us. And Lord, I pray that you would give direction, Lord. Give clarity, Lord, to every situation. Lord, I bring to you that you bring peace, Lord, to every heart and every mind, God. I pray that you bring strength and courage, Lord God, to every life right now. Give strength right now. Bring healing, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would make right, Lord God, the past. Make right, Lord God, our minds, our hearts, Lord God. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a great, big, mighty God. And he's just a name away, the name of Jesus. And he can minister to anything you need. There is nothing that he cannot minister to. Absolutely nothing that he cannot minister to. Your situation is not too big. It's not too unique. It's not too dysfunctional. It's not too messed up. God is here to meet every need. As we uh, take up an offering at this time, uh, while they're coming, there's just a few announcements that we have. Uh, tonight at 5 p.m., we do have discipleship class. Uh, Brother Cluster, he'll be ministering today and also at 5 p.m. So come at 5 p.m. You won't want to miss it. It will bless you. Uh, tomorrow night and the next Monday night, so the next two Mondays, uh, we have game night at the church. So just fellowship, bring a friend, bring some family, bring some games you want to play. That's tomorrow and the following Monday at 6.30. Of course, Wednesday, we have 6 p.m. Kids Club. Uh, we have 6 p.m. Exploring God's Word and Youth Group at 6 p.m., then Bible study at 7.30. So that's exciting. And then today we do have a couple of nursing home services at uh, 2 and 2.30 or 2 and 2.45, and then 3 o'clock. So well, let's pray for this offering and continue to worship God. Lord, we thank you that you have, mo have moved in this place today. We ask that we would just continue to follow after you. Help us be discerning. Help us be sensitive to your voice. Lord, I pray that you would bless this time, bless this offering, Lord, to the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, we just want to honor you today. We want to praise you today. We want to hear your voice and be directed by it. We praise you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Let 
Let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow. And my weakness, your glory appears. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Because all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet God, I praise you right now. God, I invite you into my heart, God. Come and change me, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh. Not for a minute. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Your name. Is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, Oh. All creation's cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, and the angels cry, holy, 
creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever, and the angels cry, holy, There's uh, only a couple people in my life that I trust. Um, I trust a lot of people-ish, not really. Just kidding. No, but uh, r- truly, though, uh, the clusters, uh, you know, there's not, there's not people in our lives that we trust more than the clusters. And you're not going to find people that, you know, are just more just wonderful, kind people. And we trust them very much. So whatever they come up and say, uh, I back him 100%. He has his liberty. I support him a thousand percent. I love them dearly, dearly, dearly. Some of my wife and I's closest people on the planet. And he's going to sing a song. We're going to worship together. And let's just, let's just pray that our hearts are open. Let your hearts be open today. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's so good to be with you this morning in Aberdeen. This beautiful fall morning. It's so awesome that we can we can be in Watertown. You can be seated. You can be in Watertown. We can be in Aberdeen. We can be in Rapid City, but it's the same God. We just sing about his name. Man, when his name is present, anything can happen. Anything can happen. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express? could sing these songs as I often do every song must stand and you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a heart Oh, 
Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you got a light in the inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Can you help me say, oh, come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you got a light in the inside of those lungs my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord yes oh we praise you Lord you're the lion of Judah to the great I am Oh Come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion Inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again ha. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah can we lift our voices right now you may not feel like you have much but if you've got breath in your lungs you've got a victory in the name of Jesus no matter your circumstance this morning if you're here the enemy doesn't have a hold on your life and if you've got a sacrifice of praise and you lift your hands and just say, I'm going to give you praise today, God. I'm going to magnify your name. I may not have much, but what I have is a hallelujah. What I have is a give you praise for everything in my life. Every blessing that you've poured upon my life. Every good thing that you've given me, Jesus. I'm going to lift my hands and pour it back to you. Hallelujah. Jesus, let's clap our hands unto the King of Kings. Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes we can use that as a cliche. We could say, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. 
I need something else to say, so I'm going to say that. Um, I think that's very dangerous. If you say you feel it, you better feel it. And I feel the Holy Ghost in this room. I believe God is going to speak to us this morning. We are in the perfect will of God, and it is an honor to be with you this morning. Uh, I want to thank Brendan and Jayla. They are they are some of our best friends, and we came into each other's life at the perfect time. Uh, we needed a friend, and they needed a friend, and, and God put it together. And it's pretty incredible to watch as God unfolds, as the song says, he unfolds the rose. And to watch as, as God has opened doors in their life and being, thank you, sir, being pastors of this church. I want to thank this church for allowing us to be here. We take it um, high honor. We don't take it lightly to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you to the James family for letting us stay with them last night. Um, they were gracious to open their home to us, and we got there. I don't know what time was it. It was around, it felt like it was 1030, because right now it's getting dark, so I think it was around 830, but I want to thank them for letting us stay. Um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to get into the Word of God, Psalms 84. We're going to read um, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 10. It says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. In verse 10, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper, but I say a doorkeeper, in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Can we lift our hands right now and pray that the word has its way today? Father, we thank you for the honor and the privilege to be in your house. Lord, we thank you. We do not take this lightly. God, that this moment, we don't want to miss it. What you're going to do in our hearts and our minds and establish in this service. We're going to praise you. We're going to lift you up and glorify you. You alone are worthy. Come ahead, church. Lift your voice and praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift our voice to you, Jesus. Hi, ah, yeah. Hallelujah. Before you're seated, I want to do that one more time. One more time. We're going to lift our voice louder than you feel comfortable. You say, man, I, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a yeller. That's, yeah, okay. That's not my personality type. Well, we're going to just get rid of personality types right now because it's his personality that we're wanting. And so when you begin to lift our voice, it, it's shredding the atmosphere. It's letting, it's, letting, it's letting heaven and earth know, I'm, I'm here to declare that there's one God. I'm here to declare that his name is Jesus. So in Aberdeen right now on a Sunday morning, let's lift our voices and begin to shred the atmosphere. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Lift your voice. We're going to magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can feel it shift in the atmosphere. When you lift your voice, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Psalms is one of the most amazing books in the Bible because there's so many relatable texts for us in our day. There's uh, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And we, we use these Psalms, we go to them for moments in our life when we're feeling low because the book of Psalms is written by men that have ups and they have downs and it's, it's relatable to us. But it's so easy to just read a psalm and not know the context, not know the history of what's behind that. Why was it written? Well, why was this person crying out that, you know, it's better to be a doorkeeper in the house of God than, than to have a position or title? What, whatever it is, as long as I can have him, that's all I need. So how could, how could somebody write that? Well, before we launch out into this book, I think it's important that we should go back and do a little bit of a history lesson and understand that this psalm was written by the sons of Korah. 
At the beginning of a psalm, you'll see at the top, written by Asaph or Korah. And Korah, if you just read over that, you'll say, man, that's just one of these names like in, you know, Chronicles, all these names that you have no idea what they mean. Why are they even in there? Names you can't even pronounce, right? But they're there for a reason. And Korah was the cousin of Moses and Aaron in the book of Numbers. And Korah was a Levite. He was given the incredible task of taking all of the instruments of the tabernacle and carrying them, protecting them. But they were not to be the priests. They were not allowed to be in that role. And Korah got a little upset because he began to look at his role and he said, you know what? I'm related to these guys. I should be allowed to be in that position. I should be allowed to do that. And Moses looks at Korah and he says, don't you realize who you are? Don't you realize what God did in Numbers chapter 8 when he set aside the Levitical priesthood and he's saying, what I want you to do is important and I'm going to separate you and you're going to have an important task in the kingdom. But they, they just couldn't see that the position they were given was important enough. I've been there. Man, God, I, you, you've called me to do this. You've called me to do that. But where I'm at right now is not what that looked like. And I start questioning if he really did tell me that. If he really did set me apart for something specific that only I can do. And Korah began to let something happen inside of him. He, be, he began to let dysfunction, a cycle, begin to work inside of his heart. And he went from just complaining about it to himself to complaining about it to others. And suddenly he found a group of people. They're dissatisfied too. This guy over here is upset. He's a, well, what if we get a band together and we just say, you know what? We're going to challenge authority. We're going to come against Moses and Aaron. And we're going to say, you know what? If you can do it, why can't we do it? What's so special about you? I can sing, I can play, I can do all the things you can do. Why would God choose you to do that? You see, God raises up and tears down. It's not our position to say, you shouldn't do that. You sh if he put him there or put her there, it's his word, and it's established. If it's done in authority. And Moses began to let dysfunction in his life. What is a dysfunctional cycle? It's a destructive habit or negative thinking, toxic relationships. Who are you hanging around? Why am I having these thoughts that just continue to drag me downwards? I can't seem to get out of this hurricane of emotion that's constantly grabbing at me. And I, I, I wake up with it. I go to bed with it. I go to church. I lift my voice. I do what the preacher says, but I cannot seem to break it. Well, that's where Cora was. I come this morning with a word of hope. If you find yourself in a cycle of dysfunction, don't give in. Because God has a way through that dysfunction. He has come to establish his throne in your life. And that dysfunction has no place. Has no place. You see, to be called a son of Korah was not something that you would want to aspire to. He had rebelled against God's appointed leaders. His own family members. He had been condemned by God in the most graphic way imaginable. The story goes where Moses and Aaron finally address Korah, and they say, okay, if you're right, then something drastic will happen to you. If we're, if we're right, if, if, if we're right, something's going to happen to you. If you're right, something will happen to us. And so they get together, and, and, and Korah comes, and he says, fine, I'll, I'll go along with that. And the Bible says that the earth opened up and swallowed Korah and everyone that was a part of this rebellion. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, just referencing it, it says that rebellion is, 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 a, is, is like witchcraft, disobedience. God does not like disobedience. He doesn't like when the word is established in your life and you say, this is what I want you to do. Well, God, I, I feel like I'm important I should be doing that. Well, how about just a doorkeeper? 
How about just handing, handing a flyer to somebody and say, hey, I want to invite you to church. You don't know who you're handing a flyer to. You don't know that person, Cora. You don't know what's in, their, what's in their future. You don't know the destiny that they might have. And if you can't get over your own dysfunction in your life, you're going to cause not only you, but a lot of other people to go down with you. It matters what you and I do. It matters what I say to somebody else. It matters what I allow in my heart. It is why the Bible says to search the heart. Try, try me, Lord. Why? Because it's deceitfully wicked. The moment you think you know what your heart, it's going to trip you up. And you're going to say, man, I, why am I feeling like this? Why, do I, why, why am I frustrated with my purpose? Anybody ever been there? Frustrated with the purpose, the plan God's put in your life. It's just not unfolding, God. Well, are you being faithful to what I've asked you to do right now? Because if you're not faithful, Cora, with, with what I've given you, you're not going to be able to go further. You've got to be faithful in what I've asked you to do. So Cora incites a rebellion. And everybody around, I don't want to be next to him. I don't want to be next to anything that has to do with him. And Cora's not understanding that his generations are, are relying on him. They're relying on what he's going to do in this moment. In Numbers chapter 26, the Bible says that when Korah was swallowed up, instead of his entire family being swallowed up, there were three sons, three sons, Asir, Elkanah, and Abiseph, that decided to say, I will not go against the authority. I will not stand with you against Moses and Aaron. That takes, that takes some gumption to go against your own father. You see, in this time, your father was everything. It, he, was the, he was the head of the home. You respected him. And if you, were the, if you were the eldest, you're carrying on his name. So whatever he does, you need to follow suit. You need to stand with him. But his own children said, you know, there's something inside of us. I want to serve God. I, if, if, I, if I'm just going to be a doorkeeper, I'll, I'll do it. But I don't want to have the dysfunction of my father in my life. Because, because God, God gave me something and I want to own it. I want to cherish it. I want to protect it. I don't want dysfunction in my life. And so we pick up in Psalms 84. Written by the sons of Korah. How could something that we could reach back in Psalms in a day we feel horrible and we could pull it out and say, man, I feel better reading this. How could that come out of dysfunction? Because three individuals decided to break it. And they said, I'm not going to stand for it in my family. I'm not going to just go to church and be a part of it. I'm not just going to go along to get along. I'm not just going to make a check on a box that says, well, I came. No, I'm going to lift my voice every chance I get. Why? Because I'm a child of God. Who, who are you, Jeremy? I'm a child of God. Well, what, what, what do you do? I, I worship him. Well, what, aren't you a preacher? Aren't you a musician? Aren't you? No, I'm a child of God first. Why? Because he brought me out of darkness. He gave me a testimony. He set my feet on a firm foundation. He established the way I'm going to go. In our society today, it's all about status. Clicks, likes, Instagram photos, selfies, getting, getting my identity secure. That is not going to secure your identity, as we have found out. All it's doing is creating a cycle of dysfunction. And if the enemy can get a society to be focused on just them, focused on what they don't have, focused on what I can possibly get instead of what God has given them, he's going to steal your victory. And you're going to wonder, why can't I lift my hands? Why does this, this dream keep haunting me? Why, why, why can't I... Feel what that individual over there feels, and they're worshiping God. I've been there. And you know what I had to face? It's me. It's not him. 
Korah, it's you. It's not Moses and Aaron. They're doing exactly what God asked them to do. You're not following the position that I've put you in. And you're creating just this constant rebellion among the people. I've come tonight or today to establish there's an authority in this city. You can feel it when you pull into this city. God is doing something right now. Not five years from now. He's doing it right now. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to incite something because I'm frustrated. I want to be a son of Korah that says, I, I don't care whatever the pastor asks me to do. If he wants me to sweep the floor, I'm going to get behind him because there's a city that needs to hear the gospel preached to them. Can we lift our hands right now and pray? There's a city that needs to hear the word of God. There's dysfunction in homes that needs to be broken. It's not going to be broken with me focused on just my own situation all the time. It's not going to be broken because I'm, I'm, I'm just not wanting to get out of this cycle. It's going to be broken when you refuse to do what you're feeling. You do the opposite of what you feel. You're not always going to feel like coming to church, man. You're not always going to feel like lifting your voice. Sister Jayla, this morning I said, how you feeling? Oh, not good. She's, she's up here leading worship, and she can't hardly sing she's, her voice. And, and it's incredible because she understands that it's not about me. It's about the kingdom of God. Whatever I've got to do, whatever I've got to ask me, Jesus, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Why? Because it's not about me. It's about the kingdom of God advancing. That's not a little thing. That's everything. So when you read Psalms 84, verse 1, how lovely, and I'm going to read it in the New Living, is your dwelling place or tabernacles, O Lord of heaven's armies. It's, it's coming from somebody that watched, that understood their history of somebody that didn't want to dwell in the house of God. They, were, they, they wanted to dwell in their own misery. Verse 2, I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. I just want to be in your presence. Whatever i got to do to get there. Why, why, would you, why would you write that, son of Korah? Because you don't know where I came from. You don't know my history. We all have a testimony. We all come from somewhere. We all have baggage. We all have situations that have happened in our life. Some we were open to talk about. Some we're not open to talk about. And you have an adversary, and I have an adversary that wants to just wrap those chains and continue to wrap them and pull them as tight as he can because if you and I can break free from it, wow, that's what you want from me. Just, just a doorkeeper, I'll do it. I'll give you everything I've got because you gave everything to me. You gave it all for me. And if, if, I, if I could just do something in your presence, God, I want to be a son of Korah. I want to I wanna long to be in the presence of God. I want to dwell in his presence. Verse 3 says in Psalms 84, even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar, O Lord of heaven's armies. He's saying, even if I could just be like the bird that, that, that builds its nest near the altar, if I could just dwell near the altar, well, I got good news for you. You can. You can dwell. You can dwell there. It's not just about a Sunday morning. It's on a Monday morning when you do not feel like praying. Anybody? Say, man, you don't feel like it. You feel like that everything's coming against you. But if you can do the opposite of what you feel, if you could say, I'm going to lift my hands right now and magnify you. Well, I didn't get goosebumps. Nothing happened. You don't think anything happened, but you just took a link out of that chain, and you're saying, I'm going to watch that chain completely separate and fall off of my life. Verse 4, what joy for those who can live in your house. Uh, always singing your praises. Why do you got so much joy all the time? Because you don't know what he's done for me. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. You don't know what God's done for me today. 
You got a testimony. Don't let the enemy come in and tell you you're stuck in dysfunction. I know I'm not. I got a God that fights for me. I got a God that goes before me. He consumes my foes on every side. Verse 5. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. What is he saying here? He's saying that these, these men that wrote this, they did not live in Jerusalem. They lived in other cities around Jerusalem. And two weeks a year, they would make a journey to lead worship in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. Two weeks a year. They would, they, that's all they could get if they could just get there. And this journey was not easy. It's not, it, it wasn't something that, yeah, hey, let's just go to the house of the Lord today, get in our, our Camry and, or our Tesla. That's a big difference. And, and we'll, go, we'll go to the house of the Lord. I don't know if I've ever put Camry and Tesla in the same sentence. Elon Musk would not be very happy. But it wasn't so easy like that. It was, it was rough. It was, a, it was a journey through a, like a desert place. It was, in verse 6, it was called the Valley of Weeping they had to cross through. It wasn't easy to go to the house of the Lord. And it's not always easy for us. But if you can get up and say, I don't feel it, but I'm going. What are you going to do when you get there? I'm going to lift my voice. Well, if it's not going to do anything, it didn't last week. It didn't the week before. No, it did something because you keep coming at me telling me it didn't. The moment the enemy stops bothering you I'd get a little nervous because you're not a threat anymore I'm not a threat anymore I've just decided to accept every lie he's told me and he'll, he'll bother me a little bit but he's not going to use a lot of resources because I'm doing it to myself I'm just going to sit and dwell in these lies he's telling me. He's going to go over here and he's going to try to get the person that's always at the front worshiping God. He's going to try and pull their hands down with all these lies about their past. And well, if God is God, why did this happen to you? Anybody ever had someone ask you that question? Well, if God is God and he knows all, why did this happen? Well, we're human beings. Things happen. The, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Things happen. Life is going to happen. He's given us the power to choose. So sometimes things happen. I choose that route. He never intended me for, to go that direction. But I chose something that led me that direction. But in the end, God knows where you're at. He knows the path you're on right now. He knows where you're going. You see, he's already there. Ha, <laughs> He's already there in the future. He's, he's waiting for you and I to get to that place. He's saying, I've seen Aberdeen landmark. Ooh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. I've seen this city set on a hill that cannot be hid. I've seen the, the outskirts, Ipswich, all these cities uh, having daughter works. Uh, I've seen Mowbridge. Uh, I've seen it, and I'm just waiting for a church uh, to say, I'm not going to be Cora. I'm going to be a son of Cora, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there in that future. Whatever you have for me, God. Why? Because you're not fighting for just right now. You're fighting for something that God's seeing generations later. Come on, lift our voice. Let's lift our hands and magnify the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is in this room right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 7, they will, grow, they will continue to grow stronger, and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. The farther they travel onward in that way, instead of being faint and weary, instead of giving up because I can't keep going, I don't see the vision, God. I don't see, I don't see my position, my purpose. What, what do you want me to do? How about you go to Moses and Aaron, and you fall before him and say, you're the leader God's anointed. Help me see the vision for this area. Help me see what's going to happen. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to wake up and realize it's gone. And I fought for years to see it happen but because I couldn't break a dysfunctional cycle. And it's in your power and my power to do it. God's not going to come down and make me make a choice that says it's time to break it. He'll lead me. 
And he wants to lead you and me. But he's not going to make me. Because if he makes me, I want you to do it. Break it right now. Oh, okay. There's not really any ownership in it. And then the next time something happens, what am I going to do? I'm going to repeat the same thing. It didn't break. So he's saying, I I, want to let you recognize there's an issue. But you and I have got to be the ones that will break that cycle. Verse 8, O Lord, God of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Verse 9, O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. In verse 10, how did this psalm come about? It came through, it came through some history of dysfunction. Ah, verse 10, a single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I may not have the mansion on the hill that Instagram wants me to believe. I'm a success if I get it. I may not have that incredible business. I may not be a business owner, but you know what I do have? A day in the courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. If I could just lift my hands in the presence of a holy God, where where is society going to go? They're going to go to Landmark Gospel. Where are they going to look when everything starts unraveling? They're going to f- try to look for a son of Korah. Somebody that will say, I'll, if, I, if I just can sweep the floor, whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it because a day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I'm not the most talented God. I'm not the most gifted God. That's okay. Moses stuttered. Abraham lied. Uh, how many? How many you want to go through? They all had flaws. They all had had things that they didn't that, that weren't right about their life. Uh, we hold we hold these people in the Bible up like they're just uh, these beings that we can never as- achieve to be like. No, 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 no. They're just people like you and me. That God said they're willing to break a dysfunctional cycle. Esther was willing to break it for her people. If you're willing to break it, God will open a door for you. But you have to walk through it. Let's lift our hands one more time. The Holy Ghost is operating right now. I can can feel it. He's moving in some hearts right now. Moriki suto rabariki sando rabata ha. Urroso to rikanda riara rabaha. Mosundo riara basa to roboko satara ha. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, sato robo satara ha. I could feel the spirit in this room, it's saying, but you don't understand. You don't know what happened to me. I can, I, can, I can hear it. You don't know what somebody did to me. My situation's different. Well, I've come with a word from the Lord this morning. You can be a Korah or you can be a son of Korah. But the choice is yours. And whatever happens in this church... I can be a part of it, or I can be a part that the ground swallows up and the revival just goes right over. But the choice is yours, and the choice is mine. I don't attend this church, but I am 100% submitted to the authority and pastor of this church because God has set them up in this city for such a time as this and he needs the church to say you know what no matter what happens i'm gonna stand with them that's right no matter what happens why because i'm gonna be a son of Korah. if all i if all i get to do is just shine the cup (laughs) 
If all I get to do is take the, the altar of incense out of the town, whatever it is, I'm going to do it with everything in me because I've got the backing of God if I've got the backing of my pastor. Anything can happen in Aberdeen. Anything can happen in beyond this region. If this church says, now is the time. Now it's going to happen. Not five years from now. Now it's going to happen. Whatever, whatever God's spoken to you, it's going to happen because God has anointed a man of God in this city that can see it and believes it in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 12. O Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. Three things we can learn ultimately from the sons of Korah. Number one, family legacies do not determine everything. Sons of Korah would go on to write 11, some say 13, between 11 and 13 different psalms. Psalms 42, Psalms 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 84, 85, 87, 88. Psalms like this, as the deer longs for the stream of of water, so I long for you, O God. Psalms like God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Where was those born out of? It was born out of a legacy of dysfunction. And they said, I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm going to be able to write something someday that somebody in Landmark Gospel Aberdeen, South Dakota, is going to be able to declare in the atmosphere. Seven generations later, after Korah, we're introduced to a man by the name of Samuel. Samuel was a son of Korah. Samuel the prophet who would anoint David to be king. You don't know what's in your destiny. You don't know what God's got for you. You don't know who God's going to say, hey, I want you to go Go over there. There's a little shepherd boy that, that, that I've, I've chosen to do something special for me. Can we all stand? You don't know who's in Aberdeen. Man, I feel that. You don't know. You don't know who walks through those doors. But if you can be a, a set of core that says, I'm, I'm going to look. And see through the eyes of God who that person is. Because it doesn't matter my legacy. It doesn't matter where I come from. It doesn't matter how much baggage I've got. We serve a God that can take that baggage away from you this morning. He can take it. The second thing, obedience in the small tasks God gives you. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Are you being faithful in the little things God's asked you to do? Oh, that's hard, man. Like, you don't understand. I'm called to greater things. He asked it. Are you being faithful in the things that you think are insignificant, that you think don't matter? Because if, you, if you're not, you're not, I'm not going to trust you with much. I'm going to give it to somebody else. Because I can trust them. And the third thing, God can redeem anything and anyone. Samuel's sons did not follow after him. But after Samuel's sons didn't, their sons did. And it turned back. It's time to break some dysfunctional cycles in our minds, in our hearts. And you and I can do it this morning. I want to open these altars. We're not going to have music. What I feel in the Holy Ghost is that if you're gifted in intercession, I need you to begin to pray. Because there's some decisions that are going to be made today before we leave this place. They, they, they have to be made today. And I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss it. So if you have the gift of intercession, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray. 
Hatoria sando rabacarehe, masotoria ramasondorie, maramosite la reye toromo satarraba, hiara robo sundurai de le robo kundurraha. That's it, church. That's it. Lift your voice.